Fabian Coulthard. Always good to chat to this guy. Uh, sorry I can't be there to sit next to you and have a yarn, mate, but I'm really curious to know about your life before supercars. Yeah, look, um, obviously, like most people, started off in go-karts and, you know, progressed through the ranks. Um, won go-kart titles in New Zealand, uh, won the former Ford Championship in New Zealand, ventured across to uh, Australia and raced the Australian Grand Prix. Um, the only time um, I've raced in former Ford outside of New Zealand. Uh, come away with the Alan Jones Trophy, which hasn't been done before. Alan Jones Trophy's never left Australia, so you know, that was pretty cool to be able to achieve that. Um, and then for me, you know, I felt like I'd achieved everything I could in New Zealand and um, didn't do the Australian Championship, but wanted to go overseas and, and race in Europe. Um, obviously, as a kid growing up, my childhood dream was always Formula One. Um, and we, I guess, looked at both avenues, you know, go to America and potentially go down the IndyCar path or um, go to Europe and then, you know, try and get to Formula One, which, you know, I knew at the time was going to be tough and turned out to be very tough as well. So. Um, I went overseas, raced for Moreno. Uh, I was l l uh, teammates with Lewis Hamilton for a couple of years, which was, um, you know, it was a lot of fun. You know, he was a, a great bloke and still is. Um, so yeah, did that, had some success. Uh, unfortunately, the money ran out, and um, you know, the ne next be best option was to uh, to come back and race in Australia. And um, you know, I got an opportunity with Greg Murphy Racing to race in the Carrera Cup Series. Won the championship in 2005, which it's a long time ago now. It didn't feel, doesn't feel that long, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a long time ago. So yeah, been in supercars full time since 2008, and uh, yeah, here I am. Well played, well played. You are a, a not too distant relation to, of course, David Coulthard. Was he a guy that you looked up to when you were a kid and thought that's why you wanted to get to Formula One? Um, no, not really. Uh, for me, I was, you know, a six-year-old kid um, wanting a go kart for my birthday and I was never pressured by my family. It was always something my father wanted to do but he could never afford it. So he kind of gets to live the dream through me which is pretty cool. Um, but uh, I guess have some success, you know, it started off as a hobby um, and then it you know, pro uh, progressed into a profession. So for me, you know, I always wanted to get to Formula One and that was just something, you know, from watching Formula One on TV as a kid. Um, but as I grew older, then, you know, David became more apparent to me and, um, you know, obviously he was very successful in Formula 1 as well. But, um, you know, being a Coulthard, uh, you know, being a distant cousin of David, I think I'm second cousins with him. So um, I've only met him the once and that was at the Australian Grand Prix. Um, you know, it was quite actually tough to get that uh, meet up to happen. You know, at the time, obviously David was driving for McLaren, um, Mercedes got wind that I wanted to get in contact with David and just meet him and say good day. and obviously with me driving Formula Ford at the time and the association with Ford, um, the two manufacturers didn't really want to be seen together. So it was quite tough but you know eventually uh, you know we got a photo and hung out with David for a little bit. He gave me his phone number and said if I ever needed to call him or wanted some advice then you know just to pick up the phone and call him. So that was you know a pretty cool contact and asset to have. Um, I never drew upon it, never have called him. Um, but yeah, obviously we race at the Grand Prix and things like that time, you know, every other year. And, you know, I might, you know, have a fleeting g'day as, uh, as he walks past, but that's probably about it. You mentioned Lewis. Uh, you can't have a bigger teammate probably in world motorsport than Lewis Hamilton. What was he like as a personality to share a garage with? He was awesome. Um, you know, there's, I've got many a stories uh, about Lewis. Um, you know, we both drove for Man of Motorsport. Um, you know, he used to come to my apartment, pick me up. I didn't have a car at the time. He had a, a silver um, Mini Cooper and it had 50 cent in the club cranking. Um, so yeah, it's just, you know, little memories of, of that that you have, but uh, you know, he was obviously very much the same as what he is, you know, a fierce competitor on the track, but you know, didn't mind a laugh and a joke um, off the track. You know, he's a little bit of a practical joker and didn't mind pizza as well, but um, yeah, I haven't really kept in touch with Lewis too much. Uh, obviously, he's very busy with his program and thing like that and things like that. But um, you know, when like like David, you know, if I see him at the Grand Prix, you know, he's more than happy to you know say good day and, and catch up and have a bit of a chat. I uh, saw so you two got a photo together when you quickly, I think maybe 2018. I think it might have been the last time you saw each other. Uh, what do you make of the modern day Lewis? Is he? He seems to wear a great responsibility in his shoulders. Oh, absolutely, and uh, you know, I think. His ability to perform and to win when there's that much pressure on him, uh, week in, week out, you know, he does a fantastic job. 
His fashion, fashion's probably a little bit questionable. Um, but uh, I think, you know, you know, the success that he's had and, you know, everyone telling you how great you are all the time, I think, um, you know, eventually you're going to start to listen and, um, you know, it's going to probably change you a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I see glimpses of the old Lewis now and again. I remember watching um, uh, a social media post of him and this little girl uh, in like a cinema and she was asking him questions and things like that. And, you know, that's probably the most relatable Lewis that I, I would remember and I've seen of him and of the, you know, the current era. So, um, yeah, the, the laughing, happy-go-lucky kind of guy is, uh, you know, definitely what um, I remember the most. You were 20 when you went over, so you were still very young and, you know, that would have been a pretty big experience for you. Did you miss home? Did you struggle with any of that part of it? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, being young and moving out of home, moving away from your family, uh, you're in a strange country. Um, it used to go dark early at night, I remembered, you know, three, four in the afternoon, it's pitch black and it doesn't get light in the morning to eight o'clock in the morning. So, you know, there are some things that I remember quite vividly. Um, you know, I had some good teammates, you know, Lewis, uh, you know, Sergio Jimenez, Paul Deresta, um, you know, we used to all get along in Esto Viso. So, you know, they're all, all guys that have gone on to do great things in, in motorsport as well. But um, yeah, to go over there was tough. Uh, I took pretty much everything in the kitchen sink when I went over. I went to the Australian Institute of Sport, part of you know, a program that I won when I won the Formula Ford Championship. And I turned up there with this massive Puma bag. It had absolutely everything in it. it had my PlayStation, my clothes. I was nearly had the kitchen sink, but um, you know, just things to you know, give yourself you know, some normality, um, you know, being in a strange country. But you know, I enjoyed going over there. I enjoyed racing there. Um, but yeah, I would have loved to have been able to continue. Uh, but like I said earlier, you know, just not having the financial support to, uh, to do the next step. You know, at the time, I think it was roughly, you know, 145,000 pounds a year to race. You know, coming from New Zealand, which at the time was three times the amount to, you know, to fundraise, so to speak, to, to race over there is a lot of money. You know, my mother's a, a hairdresser that works from home. My dad's a tool maker by trade. So I certainly didn't come from a wealthy family. Um, so yeah, we've done it the hard way, but you know, to, to get to where I am, to, you know, to drive for, you know, icons of motorsport, Dick Johnson, Roger Penske, uh, win races for, you know, all those people, but also everyone that's been instrumental in my career to give me those opportunities, Brad Jones and things like that, um, has certainly mapped out, you know, who I am today. And I'm very fortunate to, you know, turn what was once a hobby into a profession. Were you heartbroken when your time over there came to an end? Is there anything you, you feel like you could have done differently or you would have done differently? Absolutely, you know, it was probably the toughest thing for me to do is to come home, you know. I felt like I had lots more to offer, but you know, the circumstances that were put in front of me that, you know, there was no other option but to come home. So um, I'd already had a taste of V8 supercars. Um, you know, 2002, uh, Larry Perkins offered me a test at Winton. Um, I was in a, Playing with Larry and Russell Ingle, drive uh, flying to Benalla, so you know that was my first uh, taste of you know supercars racing. Um, but you know, for me at that point in my career, my dream, like I said earlier, was Formula One, and I didn't really want to pursue supercars at that point. I felt like I wouldn't have given it my all because it wasn't my dream. But um, you know, to have supercars as a fallback plan and and do all the things that I've gone on to do is um, still very satisfying. Well done, Fabs. It's a really cool story. Uh, another guy in our world who seems to have this amazing backstory behind him. So well done, and I'm sure it'll be one of those things you look back at, you know, in a few more years' time and, and have a big smile on your face thinking about it. Absolutely. It's, um, yeah, very fortunate to be in the position I've been in, and, uh, you know, it's been uh, one hell of a journey. So um, it's not over yet. Looking forward to, you know, what we've got left, and, um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Cheers, buddy. Can't wait to see the racetrack again, hopefully soon. Yeah, yeah, let's hope so. Fingers crossed. <laughs>